everyone, I'm Honeywell and we're playing Settlement Survival. Our town is Cardinal Point, the difficulty is extreme, and disasters are on. Year 25 is going to be our stopping point for this series. Uh, no one wants to do another uh, never-ending Let's Play, so we're not going to do it. The game is also still in early access and, and being updated regularly, so I mean a shorter series is better. But 25 years is uh, plenty time to uh, to really kind of uh, get past the initial game and get into some late game features too. Well, maybe. We'll see. Who knows? Now, when I was first uh, started playing this game, I was really clued into um, these bonus icons around the map. But now that I've played for a while. I'm really looking for uh, terrain features and this is a very nice map. Yeah. Yes it is. Uh, those terrain features that I'm really focused in on is you want a to set up somewhere near your uh, lake which is a large body of water so you can uh, have plenty of room for uh, production buildings that require water. Uh, you'll want a mountain nearby that you can set up some mines and this is a good one. A mountain like this could be tricky getting enough uh, space uh, to be able to place a, a mine, but this one is nice and flat. I bet we'll be able to get, I don't know, two, three, four mines on this. So that is very good. Yeah, there's some grassland down here. This would be, this spot right here would be just about perfect. You see that flat coast? that little uh, farm bonus down there uh, but this mountain is in the way so yeah now we have access to terrain tools uh, pretty quickly if you need them so we could flatten this out but this up here is just as good of an area there's some uh, nice coast here we're near a river so we have access to trade uh, this river is tricky because you won't really be without terrain tools you're not going to be able to put much on this but here's a nice little flat spot. But yeah, and there's plenty of room to expand. Let's stop blathering and uh, just plunk this bad boy down. I wish I could be precise, but you really can't. So let's go. We're gonna go ahead and hit uh, spacebar to pause. Say H to uh, hide all of these trees. Oh, this is so good. Do you see these? Um, this little icon right here means there's a animal cub with this group. And if we have a hunter, um, they'll have a high chance of, uh, of bringing home alpaca for us, which is a very good starting animal. And then over here, we also have this uh, gathering icon and some peas right there. So if we send somebody over to gather right there, we might get a pea seed, which is amazing. So, uh, yeah, while I'm thinking about it, let's, uh, let's cue that up and see if we can't bring home some peas for the family. Yeah, but other than that, let's get started here. Now, the reason we named our town Cardinal Point is because that describes our marketplace layout. In Settlement Survival, if you're new to the game, the marketplace has a radius, and the only place you can build houses is if it is within the radius of this marketplace. So you can't build them out here, you can build them in here. In addition to that, there's also um, four service buildings in the game that you really want to cover all of your houses if possible. And if you put your four service buildings on the four cardinal points surrounding the marketplace, you're gonna go ahead and uh, get the best coverage. Whoops, is that right? I think so, we'll just pause that. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, you'll get the best coverage in all of these buildings. Um, uh, we'll cover any houses you build because any houses you build have to be within the radius of the marketplace. Uh, it's very clever. I saw Larry from uh, Carry Nation do that. Um, and we liked it, so I've incorporated it into my market layout ever since. Now, you'll also notice that uh, it is January, 
We do not get a nice comfy uh, spring start with this game. Uh, we get thrown into the middle of winter and it's, uh, you know, everyone needs to fend for themselves. In Banished, you were able to kind of put off uh, building houses. You could throw up one and uh, be good for a while. In this game, the happiness and the health um, have a really big consequence if they get too low. So that's not something you can, uh, you have the luxury of playing around with in this game. So we're going to take that very seriously and get everyone housed as quickly as possible. One of the downsides of playing on Extreme, of course, well, the fun part of playing on Extreme, is you start with very little resources. So we don't have enough uh, food, food, water, and fuel um, to supply all of the houses that we would need to build. Um, so we're going to definitely make a use of this game's apartment, which is just like a boarding house. But first and foremost, we're going to get one house built so everyone has a place to live. Now we're also going to try and get a school set up as quickly as possible so, uh, so some of these kids can be educated. Um, children go to school between 8 and 9 in this game, so Leo, I don't know. Well, oh, two, we have two nine-year-olds, an eight-year-old, a six, and a seven. Uh, so we're probably gonna have some uneducated people, but, but we'll, we'll make it work. Now, the reason why we're going for a school first is um, just like in Banished, educated workers produce more food, they produce more wood, um, they're just better all around, and we want that. Uh, so school first, and I'm going to make this a priority. We're going to gather up a very small amount of... queue up some a very small amount of resources to be gathered. Uh, I don't want to go too far afield until this house is built and everyone has a chance to get warm. But that is the first thing we're going to do. We don't need this walk marketplace worker and... Two people can build the school, two people can build the house, so we're going to put four builders in and see uh, and see how that works out for us. Let's increase the speed here. We'll see what crop we get over on this side. Hopefully peas, because that's what I'm having them gather. And we got nothing. <laughs> no, we did get it! And we didn't get, and we got flax. I thought that was a pea. A pea icon. But we got flax, very important. Uh, C. So I'm not disappointed about that. And now let's uh, let's see. It's a waiting game here. You see, they're already starting to get cold. The worst start that I've had was two people dying right off the bat, <laughs> which is a pre pretty bad start when you only start with uh, ten adults. So uh, so yeah, let's see how we do. 29 degrees. Well, it's warming up. Oh, we don't have enough stone for that. I've never had that happen. Um, sorry, kids. Looks like uh, no school for you. Where is the closest bit of stone? Well, I said it's extreme and we're not starting with... Uh, a lot of resources, right? No, we have stone. Let's cancel this. I really don't want them going too far. Get a couple trees they could chop down, maybe. Oh, they had... We don't have a, a much stone, is what that was. Leo's a laborer. Sorry, Leo. We tried. Dylan, Leo and Dylan, sorry kids. Go ahead and uh, stock that house with some firewood, please, if you would be so kind. There we go. Now everyone will uh, go warm up and I will feel a lot more comfortable 
uh, to start gathering some materials now. So, yeah, let's do that. What do we need? We need, uh, we need stone. Uh, we need iron for sure. We need more wood. So, uh, let's... Um, do we want to... I don't know if we're gonna have time to get some crops, but let's... Let's bring in those materials right there. And builders prioritize um, stockpiles, so I really don't want to build another stockpile yet before we get our, our boarding house built. And we're going to place our boarding house down here, I think. I like... I like placing the boarding house where I'm going to have a large concentration of jobs. And if we're going to mine this mountain and we're going to uh, put production buildings on this coast here, this is going to be in a good spot. So let's see. Now I have all this um, already kind of uh, mapped out in that like, I know that I can put a, a boarding house on this edge of the map. I could put one up here if I thought we would have, like, a lot of jobs up in this area. Let's see. One, two. What was that? Nine? Okay, let's try this again. Nine. So, road. Eight and a road, so that's perfect. This is in the wrong spot. Get it out of there. And now I know we can put our boarding house right here. And we'll bring this road down in front of it. Oops. Good. Um, I think I said that most of the buildings uh, can only have two uh, builders work on them. The, bu the uh, boarding house is the exception. That can have five people work on them, so we're going to go ahead and increase that to five. And hopefully they'll get that done for us. Uh, we'll, we'll increase the priority on that. Now, that is going to take care of housing for everyone, but we need to start producing some water. And we're gonna put our water right here next to this house. Um, there we go. So it looks like, yeah, so we had two, two of our kids age up, so that's fine. It's not ideal, but it is what it is, right? You gotta work with what you have. It is March, which is planting season, and we don't have a farm. So we are going to, uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, gather plants far and wide in order to supply the town with some food and hopefully get some uh, good seeds as well. And we're going to go ahead and uh, continue to build. We do want a farm though, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this one set up for next year. Uh, like a 10 by 12. Um, we're also going to start putting in some stockpiles around the place. We have this well over here, but it doesn't have a place to, uh, a well with a house nearby. Oh, and do you see that? We already have, um, uh, two technology points. With, you know the reason why that we, uh, put the school first, um, because, uh, your people will produce more more food, more wood, more everything. Um, the other reason that we went with schools first is because this tech point right here is absolutely amazing. We're going to go ahead and activate that right now. Um, with this activated, schools produce technology points at 100% faster. That is huge. Uh, usually a school produces uh, 20 research. With this point enabled, it's going to produce 40 research. A basic research lab, if you're not providing it with paper, um, provides 30 research a tick. 
So our school is going to provide more research than a research institute. Uh, so this is huge, and uh, we're definitely going to go for that. We'll go ahead and um, go our over our tech tree strat in the next episode, I think. Right now, we just want to get everybody in a house <laughs> and, uh, and that sort of thing. So we'll save that for the next episode. Okay, so we have water going in. People are in school. Uh, event, a gift from a gourmet. I don't know what this one is. Let's uh, slow this down a little bit. Click on that. Oh, a chubby gourmet was passing through town, having a good talk with the citizens who treated him. He wanted to treat them back with his food, but wondered which ingredients do citizens prefer. I wonder, we might get the opposite. Uh, let's say lobster. Oh, delicacy. Oh, nice. This is so good. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, hit I here and bring up our stock management screen. We're going to go to food. We're going to go to fancy food. And we are going to ban delicacy. I don't want anyone to eat these meals. Uh, these are end game meals that give a bonus to um, happiness. They're very filling. They're amazing. They would shoot up our happiness score. Um, but we don't need that right now. What we really need is money. So in a little while, we're going to go ahead and sell those. So I'm banning them. No good food for you people. And uh, yeah, let's start. Let's start the game back up again. And one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna leave room for a bathhouse to go in that spot. Over here, there's room for a five by six stockpile. Up here, there is room for a five by six stockpile. And I know this because uh, next to the uh, any apartment that you place, there's kind of room for it. And uh, yeah. Oh wait, no, a road would go first, right? Yes. Messing up, Honeywell. Oh, let's keep going. I don't want to keep the game, you know, paused all the time. Okay, that looks good. And let's get that stockpile we were talking about in. Five by six. The reason why I have a preference for five by six stockpiles is because we'll be updating them, um, you know, sometime later. And that works out. Now, along with... along with um, the buildings that we already have here. We're going to turn that off. It's too late for them to plant. Three by six. Good, good. Another technology point. Amazing. And now we have two people working in our well, providing us with water, just in time. Um, but these people are living in that boarding house down there, which is, uh, which is not that far away, but it's still farther than we want when there's two people right here. So we're going to change this and assign Matthew as a water fetcher and Edith as a water fetcher. Um, in fact, we're, we're only going to have one person on water. Because we're not farming, we really need to get some food. <laughs> food is important. Uh, but now we have everybody in the house. Yes, everyone is in the house. Um, we have water being produced. We have some food queued up. So hopefully people will uh, make it through the year without starving. And I think this is probably a good a good place to stop the first episode short, short and sweet. We have 
Um, everyone housed, everyone has food, water, shelter, kids that we could get into school or uh, tucked into school safely. Um, so we've overcome the first hurdle, I think. In the next episode, um, we'll go over our strat with how we're going to deal with uh, food, uh, wood, and herbs. But yeah, that's all for now. I hope you leave a like, say hi, I've missed you guys. And if you're new, consider subscribing, I'd love that. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.